I had the, the big pleasure to present you a sneak preview of semi-limes and obviously we were looking at the user interface what? Closer to the mouth, okay. So obviously we're, we were, I'm going to pass it on, you know, that's why I'm not clipping it. So, um, so we, we were looking at the, at the user interface and um, uh, you had the opportunity to register and I have uh, uh, set you that password, uh, passphrase again here. So it's up.semilimes.com slash p slash slash TUL2017 for those of you who might have missed it so far to register. Um, so this was the tip of the iceberg. This was really um, what users should see. It should be simple, it should be easy to use. Uh, what we are going to present today is what is under the surface of the water. And uh, also I would like to use that opportunity to introduce the team. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't come, all of us, um, but uh, <coughs> we already have a pretty uh, big amount of people here that have been developing this whole technology for you guys. And um, so I would like to start with uh, the, the, the Alex to the cube. So for those of you who are more into um, system configuration, cube is a mathematical expression for three times Alex. So there is Alex Makov and there's Alex Odegov and there is Alex Chuganov. So um, then we have um, Nikolai who's sitting there. He's a shy guy, but he overcame his fears and he's going to present what he did. <laughs> then we have uh, Artyom. Uh, he's our business guy trying to become a developer. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but he's already doing a great job on both sides, I think. And um, yeah, we have Konstantin, who was uh, behind the, the whole messenger. And then uh, there is obviously Vitaly, uh, who is back there, who's also going to present. Are you? Yeah. No, no. He's also shy. So anyway, so I'm, I'm handing over to, to those fabulous guys who, who, who created all the technology behind the scenes. And um, yeah, just grill them with your questions afterwards. So who is going to start, guys? Um, hello. So my name is Alex, and uh, I'll give you um, an insight on our infrastructure. Uh, so for a start, um, our infrastructure is based on Docker. Uh, we, uh, Triton is not the only app that we use. Uh, we have a lot of sub-projects. Each and one of them is packed in Docker container. And uh, we are hosting our Docker containers on Amazon. So uh, each app is in Docker container and there is an auto-scaling group for each and every one of our apps. There is a load balancer for each and every one of our apps. And also we use uh, different tools for sophisticated request routing. Uh, so we append extra parameters to requests. So we could route uh, requests to different databases. And also uh, we have implemented a huge system so we could upgrade our Triton databases without, almost without downtime. Um, so uh, we are migrating databases one by one. And actually, we are switching um, requests through load balancer. So uh, if your database is old, you are using your old data. If there is a migration in process for your database, it's like uh, less than a minute, you'll see a step that is a little bit of a downtime, and then uh, your requests will be routed to a new database that was cloned from previous and upgraded. Um, that also enables us to uh, avoid downtimes if something crashed, so we just deploy, uh, we just route requests back to our old system and uh, we have backups. <coughs> so if something fails with the migration, 
uh, we can always return your previous version as soon as possible until we'll be able to resolve the issue and then we'll migrate your database to the, to the new version. Uh, so wh what we would like to present uh, to you right now <coughs> is, uh, is a configuration flow of our ERP system. So Ronald have shown you yesterday how you, uh, how is the onboarding process going? So you r register at the user portal. That's our entry point to our system. Uh, you create an entity, so it's like uh, your business, and then you can create uh, mm, ERPs for your entity. Only one ERP could be active, but uh, you can create a lot of uh, like temporary ERPs, and they will be deleted automatically within 15 days. So uh, th there is a limit for them. Uh, you, you can't uh, really create infinite amount of uh, trial ERPs. Uh, there is, I think, only five. Yeah, right now the limit is is five uh, trial ERPs. And when when you are ready with the setup and configuration, you just uh, make one of them active. Um, I don't have this button because I don't have admin rights to this company. And but th there will be a button if you're an admin of your entity. So I would like to invite Artem, and together we'll show uh, how configuration <laughs> process works. Um, first of all, um, that's just tip of the iceberg, because um, configuration flow is really complex, and we have uh, uh, multiple backend services working in the background uh, to make it possible. So, uh, first is called inspector. Um, it starts with analysis. Analysis means that uh, there is a Triton installed in this container, and uh, the code of Triton is available as the Python package. And we run an algorithm to capture uh, everything uh, that Triton has every model, every class, every field, every button, every property. So we make like a, s a big snapshot of Triton, and it's called structure. So uh, it is searchable. For example, uh, those are those are modules, and uh, you can find a module. Mm, you can do search through uh, through models. Um, for example, yeah, this is a party model, and it has 24 classes. So uh, each and one of them are from different models, uh, modules, and uh, they have uh, a lot of fields. So for example, this class is from account invoice module, and it has those fields. Uh, also, <coughs> it is like nested because it has many-to-one properties, uh, or one-to-many properties. Uh, you can go, f you can follow relations, and uh, you'll end up in a different class with the different fields. So it's like a dynamically created Wikipedia of Triton. Um, also, it helps us to track changes between versions of Triton. So if something changed uh, that will not appear in this uh, in the latest analysis, um, so this one is latest, and if it's in a previous, so for example, uh, this was our field that was deprecated. So it's no longer with us, and uh, we should forget about it. Um, then, um, configuration starts with the concept of components. Component is like a group of modules combined with a certain topic. For example, this is accounting, and uh, we, we have grouped uh, all the modules related to accounting and we are calculating dependencies, so there are 35 modules uh, in that component. And we will be able to choose this component in configuration process. Then uh, things are starting to get really complicated, uh, because there is a configuration schema. Configuration schema consists of blocks. Uh, block <coughs> is a part of schema that is going to be uh, applied to configure the system. So it's like uh, each block is a transaction of configuration. 
um, each block has groups. Groups I is a uh, is like a theme again. Uh, for example, there is a group of steps, configuration steps dedicated for just general company settings. And within the group, finally, we have uh, configuration steps. So each step is a form that you'll be presented. Um, form is binded to um, either a model or a wizard or a configuration model. So form is being constructed uh, here by business analysts. So the whole idea of that thing is to uh, use business analysts uh, on a backend to analyze configuration process of ERP uh, for the full scope of possibilities uh, instead of using business analysts every time that when you have to configure an ERP system. So uh, what business analyst does, um, he creates fields um, he renames them so uh, it could be easy for a user to understand uh, what this field is. Um, also, we have um, uh, predefined values, default values, uh, different kind of kinds of descriptions, tooltips. Uh, we can make field required even if it's not required in Triton. So we can basically override everything that Triton asks and uh, make it make the rules for this even more harsh. Um, for example, um, we can implement our own validation rules. Uh, let me show you. So there is a party, it's like a nested form in here. Uh, yeah, by the way, uh, if there is a nested form, for example, uh, this, uh, that's a step with a mod for a model company and it has a field of putty, so putty is a different model. So uh, nested forms will be squashed in one big form. Uh, so all the fields from putty model will be displayed on the same form as the company. So it will be a flat form for a user and it would be easier to understand. Um, so uh, I think it's better for, uh, for Artem to start configuring things and uh, we will see everything that happens in a, let me duplicate this tab, uh, in a monitoring section. So monitoring is like a real-time uh, logging system for everything that happens on our configurator. Um, there will be a new instance. Um, those are instances that were configured yesterday by someone. Uh, I don't know if somebody of you tried to configure an ERP system, uh, you can probably see uh, this configuration process here. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens when Artem starts to configure the system. Okay, so we have existing entity and um, in this entity I'm trying to configure new ERP. Uh, I proceed further and uh, I select the uh, components which Alex was showing you before. So components are grouped by the business logics. So let's suppose I want just to launch web portal with online shop. I'm not interested in anything else and uh, here is the process starts. Maybe okay. Yeah, so this was pretty fast because uh, what just happened uh, you can see that this is in progress. Um, uh, the, it started a module installation process in the background. So there is a real-time log of what happens. And uh, you can see that components were resolved into modules, all dependencies were resolved, and now our asynchronous uh, salary worker installs modules. The, there are not a lot of them, so all of them were installed already. So we can proceed with the configuration and everything that Artem does will be displayed here. Okay, so I proceed further with questionnaire. Uh, questionnaire was designed for, uh, I think, for um, quick configuration of the company and another purpose of this is to follow some structured process. So I think many of us faced uh, the issue with Triton when, for example, you uh, try to do some accounting entries but you don't see cost of sales or sales entries because, uh, for example, Anglo-Saxon um, 
accounting system was not ch uh, selected. So the idea of this questionnaire is to go through a smooth process and to um, basically avoid uh, potential issues which you might have when configuring the system. So I will use some dummy data and uh, just for the sake of speed I will just put some d different inputs here. So I start with the company name. Um, it will have a name of company. Uh, let's suppose I want also to add some company address. Uh, sorry, it's ID number. I delete this field. And uh, <coughs> getting used to touchpad. Yeah, so um, I think uh, now you will see uh, if I select United States, immediately I have um, immediately I have uh, another field appearing here, uh, state. Uh, so this is done via the validation tool which we have. Oh, for example, yes, if if I choose Canada here. Um, then uh, we have provinces appearing here. So let me show you how this was done uh, by Artem on Inspector. Uh, so this is a party form, and uh, there is a, a company address field, uh, also with the relation model. And uh, we have both state and provi province enabled, but uh, we have dynamic validation rules that you can create. So basically, this is uh, like a front end for constructing Python expressions. Um, they will be resolved in binary logic. For example, this resolves as uh, if country is not United States, then hide this field. And uh, you can create more, like uh, y you can create uh, uh, rules to make it uh, valid, invalid, uh, invisible or required. Um, you can uh, create um, groups into groups <coughs> and uh, you can create like unlimited uh, amount of nested <coughs> groups also they will be uh, combined by binary operators you can change them uh, you can uh, add different uh, I'll just select something really random um, it, it won't make sense but it, it will show you the user interface so yeah everything will be combined by end uh, and it, if all the conditions will resolve into true then this field is valid um, we can create really complex behavior uh, by this uh, and the reason why we are not using Python expressions is because we have to control it uh, in a more detailed way. For example, we can uh, just replicate with this user interface Python ex certain Python expressions, or we can create our own. For example, like in this case, uh, we are showing different fields depending on uh, this condition. So uh, we proceed further with uh, configuring our company. Uh, for simplicity reason, I will uh, just fill in another field, which is company currency. It's a required field. And proceed to the next step. It asks me to select the chart of account. Uh, for example, I choose US chart of account, which will be uh, then uh, created in the system. So going further, we can select here company print formats, which will be used by default in the company uh, for this ERP. Okay, another required step, um, which we cannot skip. By the way, some steps can be skipped. Uh, some of them are required. This one we cannot skip, and this is the employee name uh, who has administrative, uh, administrative rights. Uh, otherwise, many uh, functions will not be available for uh, launching in Triton. Well, and suppose I want to, uh, I know when my employee starts, he starts to work on the 8th of December. But suddenly, uh, uh, you know, I have a mistypo and I decided that he will finish his work on the 6th of December, which doesn't make any sense. I press next and here is another example of validation rule. 
So um, this form simply cannot be skipped uh, if they are run, uh, if the input is not correct. So yeah. So what happens now? Uh, we have just finished configuration block, and uh, it is now um, being executed. So you can see logs in real time. Uh, everything is in green, so I guess it's a good sign. And uh, it was finished. So we can uh, view logs of what's happened, and uh, it's mostly raw events from configurator, but it's it's really useful to have them because uh, along with the just a message, we can view uh, step values that Artem have entered, or a structure that uh, configurator uses to navigate through Triton models and uh, map values that uh, Artem have entered. Also, we can view the data of JSON schema that was uh, uh, built to construct a, f a dynamic form. So we are constructing forms dynamically depending on the list of components that user chose. Um, for example, uh, each model in Triton has uh, a lot of classes and uh, classes usually in different modules. So I if you select certain uh, set of models modules, then uh, you will receive different forms uh, with different fields and uh, we are tracking everything so we, we are able to cut out fields that won't be used by Triton because there is no model, th th there are no fields in the model because the module was not installed. Um, so this is a pretty short form and um, uh, yeah, that's why we are trying to keep it as simple as possible. Um, so the block is finished. I think we can proceed with configuration. Yeah, so it's a very short configuration. Uh, so our task is just to file apps or to launch some simple web portal. That's why first block uh, was with the required steps. Uh, without which uh, the system cannot run, like for example company name or uh, user with the administrative user rights. But we passed this block with the required um, questions. Now we are going to configure some steps which were selected into two components, which is uh, web portal and online shop. So I call, I need this step to assign a name to, uh, let's say, our website, let it be test website. <laughs> I select one of the predefined t themes for website. I go further. Well, I have some questions if I want to enable some uh, settings for the block. Uh, by default, I want them all to be available. Uh, okay, this question, uh, this step proposes me to create some uh, block topic categories, but uh, well, I don't want to do this. I want to do it uh, in the <coughs> web portal itself, so I rather skip this step. And yeah, I don't want to post the first block because I simply have no ideas what to post there. But I want uh, to have a forum on my web portal. I just create some dummy name for this forum. Press next. Um, yeah, it, it, this is another step with the online settings. You can basically check all the steps or content of them uh, if you register or if you follow the link. Um, yeah, I press next, announcement bar. Let it be some value. Uh, payment gateway. Okay, I don't want to create a web shop, so I skip this step. Uh, this is this is the last step in the setting. Um, I, I will not feel curious for the online shop because I haven't chosen the correct components for this. The payment methods were not done by me. I also will not uh, choose them. Otherwise, uh, the values for the um, Payment methods would be available here in the drop-down menu from the prior step, which I skipped. Um, okay, so I just select the forum from my prior step, which I configured before. Um, and yeah, I think this is pretty basic uh, configuration. I press next. Um, so yeah, the last b configuration block was finished and uh, Again, in real time, we can see uh, that everything is mostly okay. Uh, we can change log level to view if something um, was done wrong. So warnings are mostly about uh, missing values in fields. It's okay as long as there are no errors or critical errors. 
So I guess uh, configuration should be fine now. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, finally it asks for a domain name. Uh, that name will be used as subdomain to access ERP client and a web portal. And uh, just after this we can uh, press this link. Uh, so it takes some time to open the system for the first time because uh, everything should be loaded into cache and uh, yeah we can open a web portal simultaneously uh, so this is our web portal um, Artem could show if all the data that he uh, entered is uh, okay for example it's called test did you call it test? Yep. Mm, yeah, so the name of the web portal was test and uh, we also have announcement bar configured. We have forum uh, here, still empty. Uh, okay, all other items are empty and uh, they are pre-filled uh, with the template of, the, uh, um, of this web page. Uh, in the meantime, our demo EAP also had launched. I think uh, further we, we shall show in more details uh, uh, the ERP and uh, client and also web portal. One thing I wanted also to tell from my side that um, you have seen this questionnaire which we were passing through and some forms uh, may become quite big um, to fill in so we designed um, and we're implementing right now uh, the complexity level of the forms so uh, user may, may in the future select uh, if he wants to uh, have a detailed configuration of, of the step or he might choose just simple level. Uh, like for example for the company uh, would be the simple configuration would be just to have a, a party name but for uh, like level two or level three um, inputs would be party name with ID uh, numbers and <coughs> company address. Uh, default account receivable account, account payable for example. So this is in the process of implementation right now. Yep, so uh, configuration of ERP system is finished now. Um, as you can see, buttons are now unavailable because we have reached our limit of five systems. Um, next, we are going to show you an ERP client in more detail. And uh, for this, I will invite uh, Alex Sodegov here. Any questions? Um, I don't know, maybe it's better uh, to leave questions uh, for the end of this session or if you have some questions, maybe you can ask. Everything clear? Oh. I mean, the idea was really to have more something on you. <laughs> <laughs> so, am I understanding right that the configuration wizard is not automatically generated from the inspector, but the inspector is just a, is a tool to allow you to understand the modules quickly to be able to create the configuration wizard for each Actually, it's partially automatic. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it was created by analyst. Uh, it analyzed business logic of Triton and uh, created this uh, configuration schema. But what is automated is that uh, we are able to analyze what components were used and we, we can change the whole configuration schema based on this input. For example, we can reduce forms uh, to a couple of fields if there are no no more fields uh, in Triton. If if there are no modules installed with those fields, we can take them out. Uh, this one is a dynamic part. Also, validation rules are dynamic because it's really hard to validate uh, input data when you don't know exactly if there is a if there's going to be a field here or not. Um, so that's why we have dynamic validation rules. Uh, also, uh, what you see on questionnaire is uh, is a JSON schema format. Uh, is a form dynamic forms built on JSON schema format, and we dynamically create JSON schema format from configuration schema. So that's how it works. Uh, I saw that you could make fields required when they were not. 
But could you uncheck the field and make them not required when they are? Because it's kind of dangerous. Yeah, of course it's dangerous. And uh, trust me, we've spent a lot of time debugging. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it's pretty easy to see in a, in a log. Um, so I I if, well, th there are no errors right now. But if uh, such situation would happen, we would see an error here because uh, some record could not be created because it's, it would uh, capture validation error and it could say that this field is required. And then we'll see a critical error that, for example, the whole step uh, failed to be processed because of this. We could see a trace back, we could see a reason why it failed, so we could easily fix this. Oh yeah, by the way, um, we have implemented also uh, like a double backend validation, so um, we are executing Triton's validation algorithm before saving uh, a record. So we can, like f for each and different field, we can uh, run valid Triton's validation algorithm and roll back value. Um, also, if a step fails, we are rolling back the whole transaction. So it, like, it never happened. Uh, our policy here is that uh, we are trying to configure everything it's, uh, that is possible. And of course, sometimes if there is a nasty error, it can run an avalanche of errors because, for example, if you uh, want to create a product and th this step fails, then uh, later on, every step that requires this product will fail. So usually, yeah, you could see a lot of errors and uh, our analyst fixes all of it. That's why it's useful, because you don't have to do it every time you configure the system. You, you do it once, and then you just create templates and use it everywhere. I didn't see uh, something similar to the onChange uh, method that we have in Triton. For example, if the user fill some data, some value on the first field to automatically uh, field other field with uh, a good guess about what it should uh, enter. Yeah, you, you didn't see it because there is no direct connection between forms that you see in questionnaire and configurator. For, um, first step is you seeing the form, then you give an input, then everything gets sent to uh, the application that actually performs configuration. So there is a not, not a direct connection to Triton. So there is a job of this uh, configurator tool that actually applies your configuration to Triton to uh, execute those hooks with on-change and on-change with. Yeah, it was not about uh, the connection with Triton, but uh, when you configure the, s the things, you could have a uh, uh, default guess because I don't know, uh, uh, if you enter a VAT number for Belgium, you could automatically deduce that the address of the company is in Belgium. Yep. Uh, and fill it yep. by default. So uh, we are uh, supporting all of it. So we are, uh, <coughs> when we are applying a property, uh, mapping a value to a Triton model, uh, we are executing all on change and on change with properties and if there are defaults we are using them if uh, there are the different values applied by on change with we are also <coughs> applying them so actually we are mimicking what client does but in a just a backend streamlined way yeah but i think you call that when you click on next but not when you are filling yep um, there is a, there are a lot of tricky things happening uh, in uh, configurator. For example, you saw that uh, Artem um, created a forum, and then a few steps later he chose a forum uh, from the list. So it is transferred through some kind of buffer. So we are uh, mimicking th uh, uh, that behavior through buffers. And as for default values, uh, we have uh, default and predefined values on. Uh, uh, on inspector and if you want uh, a default value to be in the field y you can do this here so I if it's applied uh, by on change with you can just ignore this field and it will be applied anyway by configurator 
uh, regarding on change, we have some cases in uh, the configuration steps. Um, for example, you configure a carrier and you select UPS, then um, some fields uh, regarding UPS carrier become active. Uh, if not UPS selected, uh, then these fields are not visible. So Alex showed um, um, the validation tool which we have, and we also mimicking on change with uh, this validation tool as well. Any more questions? My question is uh, how do you, how do you maintain uh, the, the managed life cycle of the templates based on uh, the changes that are made on uh, modules when you uh, pass from a version to another? <coughs> there are some new fields that are added or removed. Uh, do we have a process to um, to update templates uh, and to up upgrade them to, uh, to the new version? Yeah, we have. Um, let me show you. Uh, so, as I mentioned, there is an analysis algorithm that runs and uh, traces changes uh, that happened in the code of Triton. And then we have uh, uh, this tool called Schema Preview. So it's basically what you will see in the questionnaire, but uh, with the different health checks. Um, so it, it, it's like uh, um, like a book. Uh, the whole questionnaire is a book. You, you see, for example, this is a warning that it has no record name. And if uh, some field or some model is no longer in Triton's business logic, you'll see a big red label called like obsolete or deprecated. So that's how you can trace changes in Triton and uh, you can uh, change um, your configuration schema accordingly. Are you able to, after you already have created the ERP, decide I want to also add a certain component that I didn't select initially? Um, yeah, we are planning to do this, but uh, right now it's not implemented. It will be a part of maintaining <coughs> your ERP system. Also, we want to create a feature that will allow you to kind of not add a, uh, a component or module to your system, but just to copy your system and add module here to exp just to experiment. Well, I guess uh, we should move on. Uh, so next, uh, we'll show you ERP client. Um, for this, I will invite Alex Odegov. <coughs> Hello, uh, my name is Alex Tu. It's default name in Russia and <laughs> Ukraine. <coughs> like, like in uh, Python dict get method, if uh, imagine is missing. Okay. Um, I will try to be uh, briefly. And um, first of all, um, we uh, implemented our client um, like a uh, um, library or model. We use a Flask application and w with a RESTful API. And we didn't use uh, Triton uh, RPC calls or dispatcher. Uh, and use uh, pool uh, directly. Also, we're using um, custom authentication because, uh, as Alex uh, previously said, uh, we forked uh, Triton and our uh, fork is stateless. And uh, we're using JSON Web Tokens for uh, authentication um, with payload with some information uh, like uh, database and other things. Um, so uh, I will demonstrate uh, some 
things. Uh, first of all, mm, we have uh, some inherited uh, modules and uh, modules writing from scratch. Uh, Uh, let's let's start from dashboard. Uh, dashboard have uh, custom graphs and graphs the uh, user can um, dynamically create. Mm, I will delete uh, currency rate. Um, and we'll go to to the dashboard. Uh, what I want now, um, I want to see um, currency rates on multi-axis uh, graph. Sequence will be uh, four. Um, no, two. Um, uh, what is what? Ah, uh, it's just because uh, Kyrillic symbols. Triton don't like Russians. <laughs> um, <coughs> yes, tip line, and I choose multi-axis field it will be currency and uh, I want to use previous value um, let's configure a widget it will be date um, and rate and I want to show some and data range type by rolling uh, rate <coughs> Okay. Oh, sh should be fine. Yes. Mm, we already have pre pre configured uh, currency rates. Um, what next? Mm, for example, um, I will, will, will show switching to different views. And we have uh, calendar. Uh, <coughs> Multi events and we we can create create from where um, and nothing special. Can uh, be can be view uh, synthetic view based on on states and uh, you you always can uh, change state or um, or not change um, what next uh, yesterday Ronald already uh, showed uh, filters sharing or common features like um, like um, like bookmarks, but I think bookmark bookmarks not interesting because because bookmarks uh, reuse uh, Triton favorite model. And now uh, I want to print invoice. Um, supplier invoices. Um, Oh, um, okay. But I want to print uh, customer invoices. Customer invoices. Uh, 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 I don't, don't like. Gnome. Uh, yes, this is a uh, print format for customer invoice. 
Mm. And uh, we have uh, Kanban view everywhere where uh, model have states. Um, <coughs> yesterday, Ronald uh, shared uh, to you Gantt chart, um, and you already seen this. Um, I I think uh, I can create custom filter and try to share and name contains and I always can can operate uh, filters uh, like this or this or I, I can save uh, like a preset um, always uh, all, mm, almost the same. <laughs> Do you have uh, questions? <coughs> How do you manage the drag and drop in the Kanban view? How do you decide if you can drop a, a cart in one state or not? And uh, when oh. you drop, what happens exactly? Um, <coughs> First of all, um, I I checked. Um, I I will show you uh, production productions <coughs> in module level. Um, we have um, <coughs> like a um, mm, selection um, se selection map. Uh, state state map. For example, um, um, I inspect this and uh, I will show it uh, on front end. Anyway, when I dropped uh, and changed state um, in uh, callback, uh, we will we'll check uh, business logic of this and uh, not apply if, if... For example, for the production, if you put it in waiting, yes. in standard Triton, you have to click on the waiting buttons. Yes, right. And is it what you are doing when you drop? Yes, yeah. right. And you check the destination, if you can go there or not? And for example, if you post an invoice, and when you click on post, you receive a problem. For example, you didn't define the usual fiscal year. <laughs> People have that all the time. So you you will receive warning, and uh, uh, you state n no, not changed. <laughs> Does it scale? <laughs> <laughs> the, the can, if I have, I don't know, thousand of records in the Kanban view, I have the, the page full of records and... Ah. <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, <coughs> uh, first, uh, We have a uh, limit uh, by in in production uh, <coughs> by date, and yes, if if you have uh, one thousand uh, productions, it it will be almost uh, infinity page. But um, that's your problem. That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could add. Pagination widget, just like in the list view. No? Uh, <laughs> you see the list view, you have previous uh, You mean uh, pagination widget for Kanban? For, yes, for, for each. For each uh, just there at the bottom. Uh, it's like this. It's just a, a, a list of 
makes sense, I will <laughs> think about this. <laughs> How do you define uh, which information is shown uh, in the Kanban card? All questions will be about Kanban? <laughs> <laughs> um, this uh, information uh, hard coded in XML. Do you have uh, a similar view as the other view of Triton? But um, for actually, uh, we have uh, inherited uh, models, a and uh, mm. yes, uh, Alex. Another Alex will explain <laughs> better. Yes, yeah, so we created a modules uh, with extensions for mo Triton's models, and we encapsulate all the logic for Kanban here. But Udo asked uh, what information of, uh, of the <coughs> production are shown on the patches, yes? Uh, 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 name or uh, did you ask <coughs> for Kanban view in general or for production specifically? No, no, uh, my question is answered. Uh, how do you define uh, where to which information is placed on one Kanban? Yeah, I, I already could you uh, show the XML for the Kanban view. Mm. Uh, can, uh, my more uh, uh, question as well because uh, each company has an uh, requirement what to show on a sale. Uh, hmm? When I show, to say, uh, show the uh, sale date or the company or I don't know uh, the, the uh, amount of. Uh, uh, of product in the sale is this conf configurable or is this decided of CB uh, line? Uh, it, it's uh, it's uh, configured, but on uh, view level because it's impo impossible to dynamically choose uh, which fields uh, <coughs> is important. Can you show the, the, the file? Yeah, actually, we did not prepare to show the code, so uh, we would we would rather not do it. Um, this is a custom view, like other uh, our Gantt chart, or like our uh, board, like our graph. Uh, we not use graph or board from Triton. Any more questions? So in the meantime, uh, I wanted to uh, mention that uh, I skipped uh, a little part of uh, what stateless means and how we did Triton stateless. Stateless means that uh, we are using our own app and we don't rely on Triton sessions anymore. Uh, because uh, this client is being served by uh, some kind of RESTful API and uh, we don't use sessions for it. Uh, we have our own uh, single sign-on feature uh, that works for almost all services on our platform and uh, it uh, allows us to just avoid uh, typing password and login every time. So you log in just once in Semilimes and you are logged in everywhere in the web portal, in the ERP client and user portal in Messenger everywhere. Uh, so uh, what stateless means is that uh, what you can see right now is an application that been, is being served from an auto scaling group of Docker containers and it serves all databases for all of our clients at once because uh, it decides what database to use uh, by request. Uh, request to a backend uh, contains property with a database name and uh, we decide what database to connect uh, at the time of uh, dispatching request uh, on a backend. So it's uh, required to fork the core uh, because, um, well, you, you can't use Triton like this because 
all uh, all the databases are different and you can't maintain connections for all of them so uh, we have forked uh, Triton to uh, implement our own uh, pool uh, so Triton has a pool of models and it works uh, in original Triton it works like this so you collect uh, all the classes from Triton models and then uh, on the next step you you are trying to kind of assemble models from those classes um, with a specific order. So uh, your model in the end will contain, uh, will be a result of merging all the classes. And what we do is basically the same thing, but we do it when we are dispatching requests instead of uh, uh, pull initia initialization. So we, we do it all the time every time that you perform uh, a call f to pull get we are uh, f for a specific model we are assembling a model uh, from uh, from a database that we have so yeah th that allowed us to use triton as stateless f to do this uh, actually it's pretty tricky uh, you have to you have to know what uh, modules to use to assemble a model <coughs> because well we have one application and we have all the code of all triton uh, modules that we have in a container but they are not installed in every database every database is different so somehow we have to know uh, how to assemble a model and what classes to skip and for this we are creating uh, like a pool map um, we are keeping a map uh, where should I get uh, this class for this model and we are keeping pool map in, in a Redis cache to be always available. So it's an extra work on every request that we are dispatching but it allows us to run stateless and that's why uh, we can scale this application significantly. Um, we just run more containers and we can serve more requests and yeah of course we have we had to implement uh, redis caching for this to to be uh, to to use just only one cache um what did you put in the cache mm, we ha we had to put a pool map it's our own data structure that we had to pull to put there so it's like uh, to assemble a model, you have to know uh, where to get uh, classes from. It's like f you, you have to know For example, it. the list of all the classes that you have to com combine to get <coughs> the fi final. Classes. Yeah, and uh, also modules where you have to take yeah. them from. Yeah. And you combine them and you run the setup. Okay. Yep, setup and post setup. That actually a bottleneck, and you should uh, you are probably you probably know about this because I saw a discussion on the on the forum. Yeah, we we tried not to do this, or we re re tried to replace deep copy with the copy in. The, so yeah, it's like a thirty percent performance boost on our system because we are. Uh, if it's bottleneck in a full initialization for you, then it's definitely a bottleneck for us because we are doing it like sometimes a uh, thousand times while uh, serving a request. But indeed, you don't need to have a deep copy because you, you, you use the class and after that you trash it. So <laughs> you uh, will have any side effect possible? Yeah, it was not clear for us uh, why is there a deep copy. So it decided just to li leave it there. But yeah, we'll, we'll do this. It's a deep copy in Triton because tri uh, the server can be a can have a pool uh, uh, create the classes for many database and keep them in the memory so we should prevent to have leaks between mm -hmm. the, the classes of different database. So yeah, so we actually don't have to do this so we won't. Thank you for this. <laughs> Th that really saved uh, a few hundred milliseconds for each request of sem to semi-limes. Yeah, and also we have to drop connections to database after it each transaction because uh, 
otherwise, uh, if we have a lot of Docker containers, we'll have a lot of hanging sessions to database. It also slows uh, the request serving a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, there is a case where we can optimize with, uh, for example, Postgres settings or session settings, idle timeouts, timeouts, and stuff like this. So <coughs> I, I think uh, th there is a room for improvement here. Uh, about the, you said you have fork in Triton to be able to s uh, manage session differently? Uh, uh, mostly for the to to implement our own pool. Mm. Ah, because uh, for session, I guess you could say just that you don't want to have authentication in Triton. Uh, we are not using Triton authentication at all. Um, th there is just a user in Triton uh, that uh, we have to know the ID of the to use for transaction to Triton, and that's it. And we have this uh, from a, from a request from single sign-on. We are keeping IDs. Uh, IDs of Triton users there. Um, yeah, at that time we did not fork Triton, and we when we realized then we have to scale it significantly, we have to make it stateless, and that's when we forked Triton. We are still merging it with upstream, so this is 4.6. <laughs> so at some point, you just need to be able to have a different implementation of the pool class. Yep. So just like we have a way to change the cache uh, implementation or the database. No, uh, it, it goes deeper. Uh, it goes deeper because we have to manage uh, database connections differently, as I mentioned. The, the pool, you, you can just say that you want on the pool to have zero connection in the pool and it will close ju after the transaction? Yeah, uh, we tried this. Uh, I don't exactly remember the outcome because it just started to work and that's it. Any more questions? So, so guys, I think you 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 witnessed the tremendous amount of work that uh, those guys put in uh, Triton. So, and also, I mean, Alex Odegov, who when he joined the team, he was extremely shy because he spoke very little English, and he took English courses just for this event here. So, I would like to ask you for a very big applause for for what has been done so far. So, Portal is next. So there's another shy guy, that's Nikolai, and uh, let's see what he's going to tell you. Well, so. actually, I'm the last, so, you know, as, oh, as, you, as always. Also going to be okay. We have left and, uh, well, how, how sleep resistant you are. <laughs> Yeah. So, but but usually I'm I'm really mm, the last guy in semi lines who who joins the meeting. You know, uh, I'm waking up the last. But uh, there is a thing that I was the first in semi lines who actually delivered uh, his part of job. So in semi lines, we every one of us works on different pieces of software. So I'm the one who worked on web web portal builder, something that we call it. And uh, I tell you the story. So the story was like this. Ronald came to me and say that, well, we have Triton. Well, yeah, so I joined the same alliance a year ago. And Ronald told me that, OK, here is the Triton. And we need a, a CMS system. And I was like, OK, why ERP system and CMS <coughs> system? So it's just like impossible, and we need to have a connection between uh, some extra CMS like Drupal or whatever, and just make a synchronization between Triton and uh, and this Drupal instance or whatever. So I was like, it, it's a crazy idea, but uh, there was a Nerit project and it looked like it works. So next, uh, like half a year, uh, I have I had a time working with Triton, uh, building this web portal editor, which is completely back, 
uh, powered by Triton backend. So, uh, I mean, this half a year was pretty good for me. And I want to say thank you for Triton community and actually congratulate them once again with their uh, anniversary. So, please. So, well, you will see the, out that the outcome yourself, but I think uh, for, for me, Triton is really good for doing complex solutions. So the web portal you see is not just uh, web pages where that you can edit, uh, add new text on it and so on, but it's also, uh, well, yeah, so, after I have built the basic solution for creating pages that are stored in Triton, Ronald was asking me to create a blog, for example. And that was like, mm, it's strange to store blog posts in uh, ERP, but, <coughs> but eventually uh, it became a good, good solution with, uh, with all the features that normal, normal blog uh, usually have. The same, for example, for forum which is for me seems like really crazy things, but, but yes, it works and uh, with Triton as a backend with just a simple models, you can have a, a, a real forum with questions and answers and you can even like some, some posts. So what is a web portal? we have in semi lines. Uh, basic, it, it consists of uh, three parts. Uh, first part is a um, uh, Triton module, which is based on uh, Nayread. So uh, I, I think many of you are familiar with, uh, with Nayread approach, and if you do, you already get the idea of, of what we have on our backend there. Yeah. The second part is um, uh, is a Flask application, basically also it's a part of Nerid that serves, uh, so this Flask application initializes pool of Triton and it collects all, uh, it finds uh, models that provides roads. So uh, when it collected all the roads, it uh, serves the app and also it serves uh, stand, uh, the third component. The third component is a standalone uh, Angular application, <coughs> which is uh, basically our web editor. So this, uh, this web editor is a standalone Angular application, but it uses API, RESTful API, uh, that is that is served by this Flask ap application. So uh, there is no, um, I mean, the, the RESTful API is uh, is hard coded a bit. So there is a, that core module that is installed in Triton. It provides a set of base uh, models that are required for the for the website to be up and running. And this API is actually a uh, kind of gateway for, for these models and it encapsulates some logic, but, but, but it's, it's, it's also possible to avoid at all this uh, RESTful API and just uh, connect to, to Triton models directly without, uh, from this Angular application without anything like uh, RESTful API between. But yeah, but we decided to, to have it. So these are three components. Um, and this solution is extensible. So you can create any module. Uh, it, it's extensible by Triton modules. So Triton modules can provide the new features for the website. For example, uh, on a website we have blocks, like text blocks, so you can add one. And all these blocks you, you see here uh, are provided by modules. So all the basic mo blocks are provided by basic module. And for example, there is, um, mm, there is a module for block and it provides a new blocks. So you can put a new block, oh, come on, let, let's have a product. 
So there is a product block, and block is a, it's a Triton model, uh, but it's it's the it is a subclass of just model, not model SQL, not model view. So it's just a model a class in a pool, and all this. Um, yeah, well, I, I'll come to it uh, later. But when you create this block, uh, it is rendered by your code that is a part of Triton module. So, for example, yeah, you you let's say we don't have a mo mo don't have module for products and for web shop. So you as a Triton developer, you can create a module that will uh, just have some model that is re registered to to the pool, and um, yeah, and when it's registered to the pool, it it appears inside a sidebar menu of these blocks, and when user puts this block on the page, uh, we see which type of block it is, and we know how to render it. So there is a Jinja template, uh, it, yeah. So this block uh, also provides a configuration for itself. So this kind of block uh, product provides uh, this set of uh, properties. So we can enter some product name. I mean, all these fields are kind of dynamic. So you just uh, create a class in Python and uh, add some, some properties to, for this class and then add this class to the uh, block model. And in result, you have a editable and configurable block. So you enter some product name. Uh, so we want. Can you select uh, each product? Yes. For this type of block, uh, so this block is about one product. Uh, but yes, we can easily, really easily create a new block, a new type of block that would provide you with a you know, gallery of products or, or whatever. It also can have JavaScript and all that stuff. So um, yeah, so now we see there is a product, uh, there is a HTML, piece of HTML, which is rendered by uh, Triton internals. So we have a direct connection between what we see on a website and what is stored inside our database. So the picture, name, and price is, is all uh, all from ERP system from from database. So the same for any other kind of blocks. Um, so in in semi-limes, you want to finally have uh, you know a community of uh, uh, community modules that will add new features uh, to this set of standard block. So that's one of the points where a website can be extended by modules. Uh, other is, uh, well, web, uh, these modules you installed for, for web portal can, uh, can add, well, new menu items and provide new views. So basically like in Nerid, so every page on, on a shop is a, uh, is a road and view provided by the module. Um, so here is, for example, a page of products. So uh, as you can see, uh, there is mm, yeah, so let's, for example, try to buy by something to just show you that uh, checkout processes also works. So card page is also just a piece of HTML. Uh, and what we can do, we can go to template and edit. Um, yeah, so there is a HTML code for, for this page. Uh, Uh, 
also there is a option for for editing HTML. So this this was changed. So user can uh, can change uh, his the, the content of his website in uh, three ways: by editing HTML, by uh, add new blocks uh, to place on a on a page that is uh, suitable for this. For example. Uh, let's let's look on blog. Uh, so you cannot edit. Well, let's take shop product. So from a web editor, you cannot edit anything on this page except for for this section where you can add the new blocks. So like, like this, but. For for the rest, uh, which is required to be edited by you know some professional designer or for someone who knows at least uh, HTML and CSS, there is uh, templates template part actually that that can be changed through through HTML uh, through yeah so through this what you see is what you get editor. <coughs> um, so, what modules we have so far? Uh, yeah, so the Triton part of, of all these websites sync is a uh, uh, usually place it under web portal menu. So a base module provides a website record, first of all. So that's where you can mm, change, well, change the main properties of the website. Uh, for adding new menu items, you can either use website menu as a Triton table and form interface or you can use the interface uh, in a web editor so the idea of web editor is to to provide um, an interface for things that is not good for tables and forms but all the rest is done through through ERP and and actually a lot of things are uh, really could be done through just tables and forms for example, uh, let me show you example of uh, modules and show how they configure it inside your piece. So let's say, let, let's try to configure blog. So let's better <coughs> configure to create engage widgets. So there is a module, name it engage widgets and in ERP system it looks like a form where you can uh, create a widget. So button text would be like click me Click this button, and the question would be, how are you doing? And then you choose options for this survey. Um, Here I'm choosing how much seconds I want to. Uh, I want user to wait till this uh, survey widget will pop up. You will see it in in ten seconds actually. 
So oh yeah, actually, yeah. So you just create uh, we just created a widget, but we need to assign it to particular website because what we have is supporting multiple website on on a single ERP. So they will they are just uh, different records uh, with different subdomains. So and some and other things that uh, that needs to be related to some particular website, like for example this widget, uh, it needs some link to to particular website. So for for survey widget, we need to go to website itself and uh, and assign it. For for other components, you need uh, to select a website you want to assign uh, in this particular form of this feature. So, yeah. So now you see this green green button at the bottom, and yeah, after ten seconds, it popped up with some nice sound and now you can submit some some feedback uh, some survey reply and then in using still using Triton we can just see replies as a um, yeah, we need to go to the widget. <coughs> yeah, now you see the submission here. Well, here we just store some API address. Uh, comment and option that was uh, selected <coughs> and the idea is that uh, so let's say we have this this module uh, but another one can create a module that uh, will use this data to uh, to do some marketing stuff for example so we can have a trigger uh, in Triton that will send emails to, to this submitted replies automatically and this makes uh, you know tight connection between uh, between end user who visit website and uh, person who who administrate in website but without uh, knowledge of uh, any technical technical details of it so Web uh, modules can provide uh, things like, for example, this widget. So it's just a, a HTML templates plus some JavaScript that is inserted on the page, and in the result we we get interactive uh, interactive content. But still, it's a part of ERP system, and for me, it seems really cool. Um, So there is uh, some team stores, uh, team store. So what you see here is a uh, is a rendered. So the idea was to to store all the content, all these blocks on the page as a as a JSON structure. So it's just all this page. Uh, before footer, so between header and footer, is a big uh, JSON content stored inside the database. And then, when we want to show it, uh, we just render it as a HTML pieces of HTML uh, using these models. And uh, it is really helpful for uh, performance. So if we would store every block. Uh, in a database as a single record, we would need to collect a lot of them because 
well every every block is a it would be another record but with the help of this JSON approach it's uh, it's really fast and it is easy to uh, to cache so the best result uh, I was able to get from from this approach by uh, using JSON structure for almost all the page plus uh, caching for well, for example, for menu and for <laughs> other non-JSON things. So performance was like uh, half of a second on on Triton, on Triton as a backend. So I think it's pretty fast without caching and uh, with uh, mm, uh, with every block has a record we would uh, we, we yeah i tried this and it was like a very long time to to wait till the page loaded i mean that when you work in erp it's probably okay to to wait few seconds when uh, while some record is uh, is loaded if it's if it has a lot of connections uh, connection to to other records but uh, on a website it's crucial because uh, well it it can be visited by a lot of people so um, it's also like pretty fast, so it's still editable, e easily editable, but it's also pretty fast. And uh, there are some more features, like you can change colors, but that's just a feature and not related to Triton. So you see that default color now is red. Uh, and yeah, and the team store. So teams also provided by modules. So all this current just uh, just for for some experiments. So these teams are <coughs> provided by a basic module, but well, developer can create such modules that will provide a new team, uh, and it will be shown here. So in in the, in the end and uh, someone can can start using it by press on install and now you can see that there is still the same content but with a different uh mostly css plus well yeah some some html parts so but sometimes it gives a uh, bad result when you switch between templates, so it's better to, it's still better to to always use the initial template you, ch you choose at the beginning. But it, it depends on uh, how team designers developed their templates. So if they did that correctly, if they provided uh, CSS for, for, for example, uh, buttons, so if you apply some CSS rules to all the buttons, it will work for with any template. If you provide uh, CSS for some particular type of buttons that could be exist in one <coughs> template but not in other, well, it would fail. It would fail, so. Yeah, any questions? Yeah, it's super simple. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I would like to show you, you know, some, some code, but, uh, but no. <laughs> yeah, now we want to give the stage to Constantine. I mean, yeah. everyone should have a fair share of the payment. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay. you. Well. Whatsoever, but uh, 
a lot of compatibility issues between the different browsers because the standard is still uh, evolving very quickly. So, please. Hi, everyone. Um, so, as uh, Roland said, I work on Messenger, and uh, I think uh, you can you 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 saw what uh, can be done uh, sending messages uh, making one to one calls but i would like to show you uh, a few other things first of all like uh, i can uh, open messenger as a standalone application and it also integrated uh, uh, on the user portal i can open it from here and i can open it from from ERP client and uh, let me show how it can be integrated uh, into our other services. For example, uh, Alex Melkov is using my laptop right now, so I will uh, search for myself in the user directory and as you can see right now I'm away and if I ask him to open messenger, just let me reload the page and uh, you can see now I'm shown as online and if he closes now I'm I'm shown as away so basically he he just opened and closed uh, we are still working on more tight integrations and we are still working on uh, making Messenger as a standalone application that you can actually install on your computer. Uh, it's still in development, but we are going to have much tighter integration and maybe <laughs> it's still highly experimental because uh, there are no uh, standards, but we are working on making calls directly from browsers. Uh, I mean, uh, making calls on uh, landline phones. Uh, but uh, let me show you one uh, interesting thing here, uh, which uh, took a lot of time to implement uh, due to uh, evolving standards, due to problems with uh, standard implementation in different browsers. Uh, this is the tool that we use uh, every week uh, when we gather together. Uh, it's uh, a conference. Uh, let me. So here is Alex Melkov. Here's uh, Vitaly, uh, and uh, they also can do screen sharing. Alex, can you share screen of my laptop? <laughs> so this is why uh, we use it. We, we can just uh, show something. For example, we use it to show what we've done during uh, our previous week. For, for this, we, we've implemented our custom selective forwarding unit, so uh, it doesn't uh, consume a lot of uh, resources. Uh, you don't have to uh, use uh, a broadband internet connection for that, because our server uh, just handles everything and you, you don't have to have connection to every other participant. But I, I, I won't go into much technical details on that. This is just what I wanted to show you. Thank you.